some folklore fall into the realm of fables. While others seem so real, we think there must be some truth to them. Well, in La Brea, we find examples of both associated with what we Trinis call the Pitch Lake. Hello, and welcome to another edition of Science for All, a program created by Nihurst to present the issues and developments in science and technology as they relate to our everyday lives. According to villagers, La Brea's Lake of Asphalt offers more than just material for road paving. They claim that waters which collect in the cracks and depressions of the lake possess healing properties. This week, Science for All examines whether there is any truth to this local belief. Is Granny in fact right? Can the waters of Lake Asphalt heal? We'll visit the area and use science to help solve this mystery. But the first story is that viscous oil with mud and sand, there was a volcanic movement, and these flow together, and when it cooled down, it formed the lake. Another theory was there was a tribe, very powerful tribe living in the lake, and they fought the enemies and they won. And in the celebration of their victory, they ate the hummingbird, and that's so in brought the God, the great God, that he caused the punishment of the lake. The one some of us remember is the one about the Amerindian village that had this feast and ate the hummingbird and the gods were displeased and basically destroyed the village by causing it to be swallowed up by this lake of asphalt. That's the one most of us grew up with. <clears throat> but as a scientist, we know that that isn't entirely correct. The oil started forming deep within the Earth's crust and started moving up because oil is typically lighter than most of the, the fluids around it. And with these folds, we tend to have what we call faults, which are bricks in the rock. And these oils migrated up these faults towards the surface. and basically form this big pool of pitch. Now the pitch really is a mixture of water that has been incorporated while the oil has been moving up towards the surface. Uh, various bits and pieces of the rock which it was moving through and sometimes some of the organic material that is also within these rocks and which has fallen in through time. So which is why the, the pitch is kind of a little different from oil because a lot more impurities in it. Within the world, there are two known lakes of this type, two pitch lakes, one here in Trinidad and the other one in Venezuela. Um, as to why we're the only two places that have lakes of this type, is probably the only mystery that is left about the pitch lakes. The one connection between the pitch lake of Trinidad and Venezuela is that the oil that has formed the pitch was formed from the same type of rock which you find in Trinidad and Venezuela. Otherwise, the, the, we are separated by probably about a thousand miles. There's sulfur there and they said that when you bathe there and you have disease on your skin like eczema and so on, they would vanish. Yes, the water is very it's very good to be. People come there, tourists gather the water, they come there, you know, every time they come to visit, they make sure they take a few bottles of water. These sulfur pools is really, um, you know, water collected from the rain and thing, and, and those, the water now, when it mixes with the, the pitch now, 
they release sulfur. Now the sulfur now is used for you know, like healing um, skin, some skin disorders. Eh? I don't think it's really a folklore per se because if it if it was a folklore, I mean people wouldn't just be going back and going back and going back for, for it to be cured, you know, to be to become cured. So I think it's just a scientific fact now just to prove that what has been happening all the time is really and truly truthful. The sulfur its origin is probably associated with the native the oils that we have here in Trinidad. The rain falls and it settles on something that contains sulfur. So some of the sulfur will move from the pitch or the oils into the water itself. Now most of the land-based crudes in Trinidad, if not all, are heavy crudes and associated with a heavy crude is sulfur. The ultimate analysis of Trinidad Lake Asphalt, it does have 10% of sulfur. Sulfur has been around a long time. It's one of those old minerals that contains antifungal properties, antiseptic properties that people have used traditionally for topical ailments for the skin. It is possible um, that the sulfur water or the sulfur present in lake asphalt may have healing properties as claimed by people. But of course, one has to really corroborate it via testing, um, scientific analysis before one can confirm that. And so it is not necessarily a recommendation that people should go into the water because we really are not sure. But clearly, um, linking traditionally sulfur and the skin it may be possible. Trinidad Lake Asphalt, to my knowledge, is the only naturally occurring asphalt in the world which is PAH free. And we do have it documented and we do have the facts and this is it. these are the results. So, to say that the asphalt is environmentally sound, yes it is environmentally sound. Is it carcinogenic? No. Can it be used if what is in it is not carcinogenic, then what leaches out, surely, this is an inference, surely cannot be carcinogenic. Our preliminary tests on water samples collected from lake asphalt indicate the presence of sulfur compounds, such as sulfates and thiosulfides. The yellowish deposits we found throughout the lake also proved to be a mixture of iron and sulfur compounds. So there can be some truth to some of our folklore and traditional beliefs. You too can use science to help confirm or reject these beliefs by asking questions, making observations, experimenting, and drawing conclusions. For additional resources on this episode or to post your comments, please visit us at www.nehurst.gov, that's G-O-V, T-T. I'm Maxine Williams. Thank you for viewing and see you next week for another edition of Science for All. Let the sun shine, old and bright. From pole to pole and corner to corner. Hold on, hold on. Behind the bridge and across the border. Hold